Howdy, folks! Wheeler Shale in the House Range of western Utah is one of the best places to hunt for trilobites in North America. Fortunately, the place has a commercial quarry near a little town called Delta, and today we will present a bunch of trilobite specimens discovered there by our fellow fossil hunters, Mike and his family, who graciously offered us their finds for filming. The layers of fossil-rich sediments are massive, hundreds of meters thick. Try to imagine how many trilobites are hiding between the pages of this stone book, containing secrets of the Earth's history. I'd like to start with this wonderful example of a trilobite, resembling those from the genus Asaphiscus. The trilobite is large, almost two inches long, and the preservation is remarkable. 500 million years have passed, but the fossil looks like the animal that just crawled out of the mud. The Wheeler Shale was described by a scientist with the last name Meek in 1870. He also discovered and named a bunch of local trilobite species, based on the specimen's collection by expeditions carried out as part of the U.S. Geographical and Geological Surveys in 1860s and early 1870s. When you touch the dark gray rock, it feels like a soap bar, very soft and smooth, without any polishing whatsoever. This rock has trilobites of two different species, Asafiuscus wiliri and Elorathia kingi. Asafiuscus has massive pygidium, with many segments fused together at the rear end. Sometimes you can find a primitive trilobite, like Olenulus, that do not have pygidium, with fused plates. Another sign of early trilobites is the absence of rupture lines to separate cheeks from the cephalon during the molting. The line is called cranial suture and is clearly present in Elrathia species to the point that many Elrathia exoskeletons simply lack cheeks. These cheeks are called librigena, while the frontal part, which usually stays attached to the rest of the exoskeleton, is called fixigena. Almost all fossilized trilobites are molted exoskeletons, as you probably already know. The chemical composition of the trilobite exoskeletons, by the way, is indicative of changes in ocean chemistry when calcium phosphate-based shells were slowly giving away to shells built from calcium carbonate. At the time of the trilobite appearance in the early Cambrian period, the concentration of oxygen in the marine environment started to reach levels that enable the formation of calcite crystals. Remember, the calcite is calcium salt containing three atoms of oxygen and one atom of carbon. Thanks to relentless cyanobacteria generating oxygen in the process of photosynthesis during billions of years, the oxygen-based chemistry was starting to play out. In the case of trilobites, it was all about calcite. Shrimp and crabs built their exoskeletons from a protein called chitin. Trilobites combined chitin with calcite, which made their armor harder and more prone to fossilization. This is why trilobites are overrepresented in the fossil records, while other, more soft-bodied animals are rare. Moreover, trilobites, as burying and actively moving animals, were disrupting the ecology of the seabeds which previously was dominated by microbial mats. Trilobites and other burrowing Cambrian creatures destroyed the mats, thereby causing the extinction of the species that depended on them. The deposits comprising the Wheeler Shale were formed in the Cambrian period along the shores of the continent called Laurentia. A significant chunk of that ancient continent is now North America, although at that time it was closer to the equator. Shallow water reefs developed near the shores of Laurentia, but Wheeler Shale was formed from sediments accumulating beyond the reefs in deeper waters. They often contain material delivered to the ocean depths during periodic massive landslides, possibly by storms as well. The remains of the animals that were quickly buried under fine sediment sometimes had a good chance to be preserved as fossils with very fine details allowing scientists to have a glimpse to a prehistoric life long gone. So, if you are to visit the locality, watch out because you can potentially find such rarities as soft-bodied creatures, for instance, Halcygenia, Narawewa, or Wywaxia. Obviously, the majority of the finds will be trilobites from Elrathia genus 
or balaspidella, and you will need some practice to distinguish between the very similar looking animals. Other common fossils in this location are very tiny, eyeless trilobites, which you would easily recognize. This is a perfect example of such a trilobite belonging to the genus Itagnostis, and until recently was known as Paranopsis. These trilobites were only a few millimeters long and had a tail segment approximately the same size as the head segment, or cephalon. Instead of rolling, they folded in half, and perhaps this type of movement helped them to get around and possibly escape from predators. One can assume that they were swimming most of the time and catching minute particles of food before they reached the sea bottom. Well, that's it for today. Good luck in fossil hunting, stay curious, and see you next time. Bye-bye!